Hello and welcome to the IIF and IMF annual meetings in Washington DC. I'm here with Sir Howard Davies, Chairman of RBS. Thank you very much for joining me. I want to start by asking you about Brexit. Obviously it's still very unclear what the new UK and EU relationship is going to be like. And as you said on your uh, IAF panel yesterday, uh, the negotiations don't appear to be going particularly well. How optimistic are you about the prospect of UK financial firms maintaining meaningful single market access? In the medium term, I'm reasonably optimistic, but I suspect we're going to have a rocky period for the next year or so because clearly the British government has not yet done enough to cause the EU27 to agree to open serious discussions about what a new deal for access for financial firms will be. I'm still sufficient of an optimist to think that when those negotiations are opened, it will be possible for the central banks and regulators to work out some sensible arrangements which allow a lot of market access. But I confess that that's more of a, of a hope and not a firm expectation at this point. Moving on to regulation. Uh, earlier this year, the Basel Committee said it would um, hold off on making any new policy initiatives for two years. And in the US, we have uh, many steps being taken to repealing parts of Dodd-Frank. Uh, we also have many of the Obama-era regulators sort of reaching the end of their term and being replaced by um, sort of appointees of, of the new government. Are we entering a period of deregulation or lighter regulation? And is that what banks actually want? It doesn't look as though we're entering a period of lighter regulation in the UK or in Europe. The Basel Committee has still some outstanding business to resolve and they seem unable to agree on the terms of what the banks call Basel 4, they call Basel 3.5 or something. Uh, I think they ought to agree to that pretty soon because the uncertainty is quite difficult for banks. The oh, Trump-led programme of changing the regulations, I think, is operating rather at the margins. I mean, it's some amendments to the Volcker rule, taking some community banks out of regulation. I don't honestly see a major move towards lightening the key regulations that affect banks, which is the amount of capital banks hold. So I don't think you're going to see that. Furthermore, I don't think that banks are actually pressing for that seriously. Uh, still in the US, obviously since the beginning of the year, we've all witnessed the uh, protectionist rhetoric uh, and some actions taken by the new US government. If the world's biggest economy does sort of retreat from global packs and sort of reduces its cross-border activities, how disruptive can that be for uh, global finance and for growth even? There's a big if in there if it does actually retreat. What's very difficult to understand from this administration is that to what extent the rhetoric will be matched by real actions. You'll see that at the moment the world economy seems to be shrugging off the threat of protectionism and is growing very healthily. Financial markets are shrugging off that threat. So at the moment people are regarding the rhetoric as rhetoric rather than as a sign of genuine policy change. If that changed and if we really had uh, withdrawal of the US from NAFTA, for example, then I think you would see a very nervous reaction in markets. That's one of the things that's obviously being discussed at the IAF annual meetings. Uh, we're here on the last day. What do you think are some of the most either important or interesting topics or ideas that you've heard or been part of discussing? I think the most interesting question is the extent to which central banks will start to normalise interest rates and whether they can and should do that even when the economy is not booming away and it, even when we don't have a rise in inflation. And typically we've tended to think in the past that central banks should act when inflation rises. But there is now an interesting current of opinion that says, no, actually, uh, financial markets will work better and investment decisions will be better if we have higher interest rates. And we should do that even if there is no serious sign of a resurgence of inflation. I find that a very interesting argument uh, and one which I think is going to preoccupy central banks in the next few months. So Davies, thank you very much for your time.